Any photographer doing documentary editorial work at some point in time says, wow, can I do street photography as well? And so I just showed up at Times Square one morning and <laughs> spent years. Street photography is a kind of endless pursuit of a perfect moment that you can't really imagine in your head, but when you see it somehow, you realize that's it. You develop a sort of hyper alertness and you try and fit into the flow and to the energy of the street. I like to change my height, so I bend my knees a lot, I go down low. I want the camera to move with my body, and with a big camera, I can't do that. Street photographers are almost like dancers a little bit. You have to be very light on your feet. I need to be fast, so I want a really light camera. I want a small camera. I want a camera that I can hold in my hand. And so with the V2, it's been a liberating camera for me, totally because I don't think about, oh, is this the picture I should be taking? I just take it. It's just like a reflexive action almost. Well, Nikon came to me with this concept about doing a project on speed and I thought, well, hmm, you know, what is it I would like to shoot? As a still photograph to show speed, right? How do you show that? You know, I think you get a sense of a city by how people kind of wake up and enter it. So you have, I think over a million people that enter New York City every day. For a photographer, it's a dream. I mean, it's got such a great history of street photography in this town. So when you do make a picture, you feel as though you're contributing to that history in some way, which is um, daunting. I like being able to shoot my own city as well and to see what I could do to show this idea of speed, which is, you know, kind of complicated. And I thought, is it about the speed of someone walking by or is it about the speed of the photographer? And so I kind of imagine this whole commuting ritual that happens in New York City every morning and people, you know, racing to get into town. And also during that rush hour, there's also this sort of jam, right? Traffic jam, subway jam. So I look for places where the crowd, like, is released from the crush almost, and then they try and like bolt down the street. So you have these like highs and lows almost. I mean, you can't have speed without having something slow, right? I mean, it's all in relation to each other. The people are moving fast, you know, like they stop for a minute at the stoplights and then they take off. And so I like to get that moment just when they're kind of taking off. With this camera, I don't even have to look through the camera half the time because the autofocus is so good. So you can get people you know, moving it like a 250th of a second and you can shoot it. I look for, for places where you would see kind of this burst of energy. Also, with speed, with the rush hour, there's a kind of anxiety, you know, am I going to get there in time? Looking at their faces, I imagine like they're nervous, rushed, tense, that they're thinking about all the things that they have to do that day, so I want to capture that sort of tension on their face. A little camera like this, the flashes are usually like uh, inside the camera, but what I do is I slave it. If you have other Nikon flashes, they'll communicate with each other. So I can shoot with this and then fire my flash. And so what's nice is you get a kind of side light as opposed to direct light. People with their heads under umbrellas, normally those people are in shadow, you never see their faces, but you just put the flash and no one even notices, especially in a spot like Times Square where everything is flash. So if you want to start doing street photography, the first thing is you have to realize that there's no perfect picture. So when you go out there and you start walking around and wandering and you're thinking, what is it that I'm looking for? What picture am I here for? Don't worry. Go out there. Notice how the sun moves across the buildings. Notice expressions on people's faces. Just try and get into the sort of dimension of the street. And then have a camera that's really comfortable, really light for you. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. New York is a great town for street photography. People think it's really big, but actually it's kind of small. It's just you have all of these very unique parts. And so you can travel from one little spot to the next and be in a different world. And so that's really exciting. You don't feel as though you have this endless city that all looks the same. 
everyone is so like deep in their head about what they're thinking about in their life that you can fire away and no one really pays attention. They just kind of move on. Plus also it's a city where you never really know what you're going to see. So we've had three days of uh, kind of typical New York weather, which means like you can't predict anything. It's been frigidly cold, then snow, then rain. The other day we had bright sunshine. I wanted to see if this camera could handle all those conditions. and. So far, it's been kind of remarkable for me to know that with one camera I can go in the subway, shoot in these really dingy, grungy conditions, and then come out here and have it balance all these different light sources. At the end of like working a long day at this, and I get back and I'm downloading my pictures, it's different than when I'm shooting with my DSLRs because I'm shooting at such high frame rates, really that I didn't even know when I was shooting what it is I'm going to get. So when I'm looking at it afterwards, it's even more of a surprise, like, what did that camera get? So I think most photographers would say that, that it's the surprises that make the picture. Mm -hmm.